local teams, highlights, and scores. This is KTTC Sports Extra. Brought to you exclusively by Hiller's Flooring America. Good evening, everyone. Happy Friday and welcome into Sports Extra. I'm Nick Spiliopoulos. We've got a packed show for you tonight. State girls hockey, section wrestling, and the end of regular season boys basketball. Let's not waste any time. The biggest game of the day, Dodge County girls hockey state semifinal action. The Wildcats put together a 4-0 shutout win over Fergus Falls in the quarterfinals, now facing second-seeded Orono in the semis. First period, Wildcats can't hold the zone. Maddie Kimbrell with speed through the neutral zone, gets behind the second defender, walks in, saved by Huber, but the rebound pops into the air, batted home by Kimbrell, and Orono opens the scoring. Wildcats. Get the first power play of the day just seconds into the second period. And to no surprise to people down here, Nora Karstensen can shoot the puck. All space in front. Bar down, short side, tied 1-1. Now this one was reviewed for potential goaltender interference, but the contact didn't come from Dodge County. We have a good goal officially tied at ones. Now the floodgates are open. Middle of the period, a shot from the far point gets kicked back outside. In, some, in comes Kylie Meyer. Tees off and the knuckle puck goes five hole. Dodge County leads. Just 15 seconds later, Maisie Cook with the takeaway. She's in all alone. Goes over the glove and in a span of 22 seconds. The Wildcats strike twice taking a commanding 3-1 lead. Third period, Orno with some life. Ida Huber late to react to the Macy Rasmussen backhand shot. Spartans make it a one-goal game. This one still far from over. Fast forward to the final minute. Orno net empty. Macy Cook blocks the Spartan shot from long range. Throws this at the empty net. No one can stop it. Putting the final bow on this semifinal. Dodge County heading to the state championship with their 4-2 win over Orono. A pair of Wildcats describing what the state championship berth means to them and their program. Coming into the state tournament, we didn't really know where we were from. They kind of looked down on us. We were the underdogs for sure. So I think coming in, winning against um, Fergus Falls and then coming into this game very confident and having that chip on our back and how we really wanted to beat this team super bad because we lost to them during the season. I think that really helped us out and we kept driving. Dodge County has never made it to state before and we're going to the state championship tomorrow so it's, it feels really good. <laughs> Some stats from today's game. Despite being outshot 26 to 37, Ida Huber was the better goaltender stopping 35 shots along the way and playing a major role in shutting down Orono's two power play opportunities. And have to applaud the effort of Dodge County's defense tonight, nearly tripling the Spartans in block shots, 20 to 8. Players describe the feeling they're having right now on the eve of the championship. We'll have some excited but a little nerves, but I think it's going to be a little hard to fall asleep tonight considering how excited we are to go into the game tomorrow. It's very exciting. Um, tomorrow we just have to show up and show up who Dodge County is. And how did we get here? Dodge County plays the four seed War Road for the Class A state championship. War Road knocked off top seeded Holy Angels in the other semifinal, three to two today. The championship is 4 p.m. at XL Energy Center. Now moving to basketball, the fourth ranked Stewartville Tigers in Class 3A hit the road visiting HVL opponent Goodhue. Right away, Stewartville showing off their size, 6'7", Kayla Bancroft banging inside, taking it to the defender, easy basket for the junior. But Goodhue also can get inside and score. Nice back cut from Michael Roshan. Sneaks behind the Tigers' defense. Easy turnaround score from close range. Tigers, they can score with ease. Henry Cheddar with the screen gets inside for a left-handed layup. But enough scoring from the inside. Let's get some outside action here. Parker Wongen, skip pass for Logan Quam. A good step beyond the arc. Drills it, putting Stewartville up by nine. Tigers, more easy scoring this time. Tegan Malone from the top of the three is good. Tigers show their dominance tonight, winning 87-32 over Goodhue. Staying in the HBL, we're in Pine Island. Panthers hosting Zombrota Mazeppa. Panthers Drew Saylor doing it himself here. The tough floater drops despite heavy contest from the Cougars. Speaking of the Cougars, Oliver Liffrig finds the soft spot in the paint. Nice pass and Liffrig. Planks it 
off the glass. More from ZM as Carter Christofferson is going to take this to the rack. He feels the defense converge while he's off his feet. One more pass to Connor Fogarty. Gives it up to give ZM the lead. These two going back and forth. Ven Ober, give me my lead back. Corner three. He says thank you. Pine Island back up by one. But something changed after the half. One team kept the momentum. The other stalled. From the corner, Preston Ohm knocks down the three, sparking five straight Cougars buckets. When this one was said and done, ZM continues that second half dominance. They take another HBL road win, 55 to 36 tonight. More scores from the HBL conference, third ranked Lake City. A big 65 to 50 win over Casson Manorville. As for the Byron Bears, they post a big home win, 84 to 54 over the Lured Eagles. More highlights for you here. This one takes us to St. Charles. Lewiston Altura, the Cardinals in town visiting. Noah Osley gets Zane Nelson inside, and the big man puts the cards up by two late in the second half. St. Charles, Connor Grancy need the answer. Jumper, count it, 67-67. That takes us into overtime. Lewiston Altura, Jace Ferguson, nice, floating. Finish with the right hand. Cardinals back up by two, but Connor Grancy finds Mason Asp, the soccer star from three. Count it. Saints lead by one. Cardinals coming the other way. Ferguson to Zane Nelson inside, and now the Cardinals back ahead by one. Mason Asp at the free throw line, tied this one at 71s. Now can he clutch up? and connect four seconds left on the clock. He's got it, giving his team the lead. This one, an overtime thriller from St. Charles. The last second heave, no good. Saints win in overtime, 72-71. More in the Three Rivers Conference. Wabasha Kellogg on the road visiting PEM. We're gonna pick this one up in the first half. Coda Sanders to Aaron Martinez from three. That counts. Bulldogs pulling ahead by three. Now Liam Powers finds Coda Nelson, last assist there. Another three-pointer, doubling the Bulldogs' lead. It's 31-25. We go to the second half. Henry Meyer getting the put back in the air. Count it. Make it 31-27 still in favor of the Bulldogs. Bulldogs, Jack Schreiber finds Isaac Foss for two, and he gets the foul. Wabasha Kellogg not going away though. Caleb Springer to Ryan Hardit. Nice up and under move. Make it 35 29 in favor of PEM. And the Bulldogs hold on to win by 10 in their home court 57 to 47. More scores from around the Three Rivers Conference. Caledonia, a big win 74 to 49 over Con Cotter. Another overtime game tonight, Dover Yoda. Squeaks it out over Chatfield, 62-58, and the Rushford peterson Trojans, no problem on the road, winning by 10 over Gilmore Central. Some more scores from three Rivers Conference opponents. Excuse me, Gopher Conference, that is. Kenyon Wanamingo loses on the road at Blooming Prairie. Hayfield, tough night on the road, visiting Bethlehem Academy and United South Central. They fall to JWP, 64 to 52. More Gophers Conference scores here. This one a Gopher Conference game at the top. Triton takes down Randolph 75 at 65. A non-conference game. WEM takes down Nicolette Handley 73 to 49. Now one more slate of boys basketball scores to get through in the Southeast Conference. Southland upset by Lyle Pacelli 57-53 tonight. Spring Grove no upset here. They beat Houston 64-38. Mabel Cannon, a big palindrome win over Leroy Ostrander, 86 to 68. One last final Southeast Conference scores here. Glenville Emmons, a nice home win over Grand Meadow by 20, 76 to 56. Schaefer Academy, a big win on the road visiting Lanesboro, 88 to 69. And Kingsland, they defend their home court, 82 to 48 over Alden Condon. One more game for the girls' hockey season. Section boys basketball is right around the corner. We're just getting started here on Sports Extra. When we return, our Matt Rainier, he takes the reins. He's got all of the coverage of the individual section wrestling tournament in Class 2 and 1A when we're back in two minutes.